Good morning and a very warm welcome to our online service today from St Andrew's Church at Ecring. We're very happy that you've been able to join us again this week. So welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you all. Loving God, we've come here to worship you together. So help us to pray to you in faith to sing your praises with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Bible reading I've chosen for today's service is quite short and it's taken from John's Gospel, chapter 2, and it's called Jesus Goes to the Temple. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold the pigeons, take them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. It's a very short but very dramatic reading from John's Gospel. Robert's going to put a picture on the screen now, which is a model of the temple at Jerusalem. And as you can see from this picture, it was absolutely enormous. But what I'd like us to do today is to use our imagination and imagine that you are somewhere in those temple courts at the time that Jesus was there, turning over the tables and driving the animals out of that temple. Can you imagine yourself in that picture, in those crowds? Now I'm going to use my imagination now and imagine that I am also there and I am selling doves. I sell doves. That's my trade. I breed the doves myself and it's quite a challenge to produce pure white birds without any blemishes or markings. But I pride myself on the quality of the birds that I produce for the temple. I sit most days in the court of the Gentiles and it's always bustling with people. People buying, people selling, exchanging money and sometimes the noise of it all. It makes my head pound. But now at Passover it's much more intense people thronging into the court. They're pushing and pressing, shouting and arguing. The noise of them, the noise of the oxen and the sheep. I could sometimes just shout out myself, shout at them to stop, to be still, to feel just for one moment the quiet presence of God in the temple courts. But not only does that noise not stop, it actually gets louder, if that could even be possible. The shouts suddenly intensify and there is a commotion close by. I stand up to see what's going on and step back in horror to see some madman with a whip of cords shouting and he's wrenching trestles from their tables from their trestles. He's moving down the aisle of tables towards mine. Money is being scattered all over the floor and sellers and buyers alike are scrabbling about in the dirt, falling over themselves to pick it up. Some of the birds get loose and fly away, whilst others flap and flutter in their cages as they're knocked to the floor. I find myself frozen to the spot when I realise that he's moving steadily towards me and my table and my birds and no one seems to be stopping him. I can actually hear him now, hear the words that he's shouting. 
It is written, he shouts, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. He's shouting, but he's also weeping. And I can hear a deep, deep anguish in his voice. But anguish or not, I'm fearing for my birds. But rooted to the spot, there is nothing I can do. And now there he is, standing in front of me, his hands poised, ready to turn over my table. I catch my breath, but he does nothing. All he does is look straight into my eyes. And suddenly the noise has stopped. There is complete silence and everything around me has faded away into nothingness. My mind, my soul and my body feel suddenly empty and hollow. Until suddenly I am completely filled with the intensity of this man. I can feel that he knows me. He's known me from the beginning of time. He will know me to the end of time. I've seen God face to face. I've looked into his eyes. And I've seen love. The purest, most intense love. But suddenly the noise fills my head once more and I'm back in the world and he's moved on. I sit there, unable to move for what seems like an eternity. And when I eventually find the strength to stand, I push through the, through the crowds towards the temple gate. And he's there. The anger has left him and he's surrounded by people, by sick people, blind people, lame people. The man standing by my side is open-mouthed. He's astonished. He says, such authority, such wisdom. And now he's performing miracles, healing sick people. Who is this man? I tried to tell him, this is no man. This is our God. But the noise drowns out my words as he slowly walks away. As I think about that man or that woman selling doves, it was probably a man. His heart was purified by his experience of Jesus. And so now we're going to sing a hymn which is called Purify my heart and I hope you really enjoy this hymn.
And now it's a time for prayer, so let us pray together. Father, so much has happened to us all over the past 18 months, hit by a pandemic that changed so much of life that we took for granted. And you find us still struggling on, trying to get back to some form of normality. And so we pray once again for all those people who were hit so hard by the pandemic, who are still struggling. Those who have lost their jobs or businesses. Children who have missed out on education. People whose income has been drastically reduced. Those who've had to rely on food banks to get them through. The self-employed, the furloughed, the NHS staff who have worked and who are still working long hours and sometimes in dangerous conditions and so many other people affected in so many different ways. We pray for all those who have suffered from COVID and are still suffering. We pray especially for all those in hospital at this time and their loved ones who are worrying about them. And we remember once again all those who have died from COVID, who are still dying from COVID. Many thousands of people all around the world. Father, we pray that we have learnt so many lessons from what has happened, lessons which have been learnt at great expense. We pray for all those people that we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, those waiting for or undergoing treatment, those who are worried and frightened and their families who worry alongside them. And we pray that you're with them all throughout. Father, we pray for everyone watching our online service, that they may feel the warmth of your love, the comfort of your word and the peace of your Holy Spirit. Father, in your name we pray. Amen. And we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final prayer. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love and setting us free from sin, that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives, give us your peace and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I pray that God gives to us all and those that we love, his comfort, his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I do hope that you've enjoyed today's service and if you have, I'd like to encourage you to share the link with friends or neighbours or anyone else that might be interested in joining in our online services. So please, I would encourage you to do that if you'd like to. And hopefully next week, I say this every week, don't I? Hopefully next week we'll be filming outdoors again um, in this beautiful English, British summer. <laughs> Not much of it to be seen lately. 
But anyway, we're now going to sing our final hymn for today's service. And I think this is going to be quite a bracing hymn, is it, Robert? He's nodding his head. And it's, my eyes have seen the glory. So I hope you enjoy this hymn. And so until next week, goodbye.